In the last video, we looked at two examples of the propagation of uncertainties. <coughs> a composite length was formed from the sum or the difference of two individual lengths, and we calculated the uncertainty in that length to be, in both cases, the sum of the individual uncertainties in L1 and L2. And we also looked at uh, the calculation of the area of a rectangle, which is the product of its width and its height. And in that case, we found that the fractional uncertainty in the area is equal to the sum of the fractional uncertainties in W and H. We came on these rules through uh, numerical calculations. And what we'd like to do now is try to justify the rules and to see if we can generalize uh, so that we can calculate uncertainties in a host of different circumstances. And just to give you a sense of what I mean, one more example before we go through the derivation. Here's a classic 107 problem. I have a pendulum. Uh, we can measure the period of the pendulum, and the pendulum has a given length L. And from measurements of L and the period of the pendulum T, we can calculate the local gravitational acceleration G. It's 4 pi squared L over T squared. And uh, suppose we've measured L and the period T in the lab, and we've assigned uncertainties to those. The question then is, what is the uncertainty in our calculated value of G? And if we look at this formula, we see that uh, at least at first glance, it really doesn't have much to do either with the formula for area or the formula for the composite length, so it's not at all clear as to what sort of formula we're going to use to calculate delta G. To get to these answers, uh, we are going to use a simple application of the derivative in calculus, and we're going to take a, math a short mathematical interlude just to remind ourselves of how that works. Okay, here's our mathematical interlude. Suppose we have some function z of x, it's this yellow curve. <coughs> we know that the value of z at some point x0, and we'd like to calculate the change in the function z. So here is z evaluated at x0, and we'd like to calculate the change, an expression for the change in the function z when x changes by some small amount delta x. So we're looking for delta z, we know delta x, and we know x0. A standard application of derivatives in calculus tells us that an approximate expression for the change in the value of the function is that delta z is approximately equal to the value of the derivative evaluated at the point x0 multiplied by delta x. And uh, just to remind us where this expression is coming from, I've tried to blow up this plot in the uh, plot on the bottom. So here's a portion of the yellow curve. And I've plotted in red the line that has a slope equal to the value of the derivative evaluated at x0, and that line goes through the point x0. And if we look at this expression, we'll recognize pretty quickly that, in fact, all it's telling us is that if we consider this red line, the change in the value of the line, which is this vertical amount right here, is simply equal to the following. Here's delta x. This, the line has a given slope, which is the value of the derivative, and the change in the line is exactly equal to the value of the slope multiplied by delta x. That's just the definition of a slope. So when we have an actual curve that's not necessarily a line, we have to replace that equal sign with an approximately equal sign. The smaller delta x is, the closer this approximation is to uh, being accurate. Erase. Uh, and here we go. So, now let's see what the, how we apply this simple calculus to the calculation of propagation of uncertainties. I want to look at um, another particular example to help us along. Uh, I have a sphere, and let's assume that we go into the laboratory and we measure the radius of this sphere, and let's say that the radius is equal to uh, R0, and we, we estimate the uncertainty in R0, so let's just call this uh, delta R. And we want to calculate the volume of the sphere and the uncertainty of the volume. Of course, the volume is going to be 4 thirds pi times r0 cubed. Let's call that v sub 0. That's our best guess for the volume of the sphere. And we're interested in determining the uncertainty in this volume. So what's the connection to this bit of calculus that we just talked about? What we'll do here is we'll consider the volume V of the sphere as 
a function of a variable r. So we'll write v of r as 4 thirds pi times r cubed. And making a connection to the plots that we just had on the board, I can plot the volume of a sphere versus its radius. And that plot is going to look something like this. It's a cubic, so it's going to be going to like that. If the sphere has a radius r0, then its volume is right here. This is the point v0. And now, in, in the context of uncertainties, I want to ask the following question. If I allow r to change by an amount delta r, so let's notate that here. This is the distance, if you can see that, this is the distance delta r. So if I increase r by an amount delta r, by what amount does my estimated volume of the sphere increase, or if I decrease r by that amount, by what amount does the volume decrease? When described this way, we can see the immediate connection to the calculus, and that is that we have some function of the variable r, and the change in the value of our function v is simply going to be equal to the derivative of v with respect to r evaluated at r is 0 multiplied by <coughs> the small change in r. That's the basic result. We can work out the details simply enough. v of r is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The derivative of 4 thirds pi r cubed with respect to r is 4 pi r squared. And we evaluate 4 pi r squared at r equals r 0. So this term in parentheses is 4 pi r 0 squared multiplied by delta r. OK, now, uh, I see I have big deltas and little deltas, so let me just change the notation to get back to uncertainties. This expression is telling me what I need to know, and that is that the uncertainty in the volume of my sphere is equal to 4 pi r0 squared times the uncertainty in the radius of the sphere. That's our result. There's a, there's a different, a, a slightly simpler way to uh, we express this result. It's kind of of secondary importance, but it helps in interpreting what's going on. So let's just take this result for a moment and, and rewrite it. I don't think we need this. Delta V is equal to 4 pi r0 squared times delta r. I'm going to divide uh, left and right hand sides of the equation by the best guess at our volume, which is v0. And I'll write it as v0 on the left and as 4 thirds pi r0 cubed on the right. And this leads to the following delta v over v0 is equal to the 4 pi's cancel. And this gives us a factor of 3. And we have an uh, what do we have? A 3 times delta r divided by r is 0. In words, what this expression is telling us is that the fractional uncertainty in the volume of the sphere is 3 times the fractional uncertainty in the radius of the sphere. That factor of 3 is coming from the cube here. But the, the, the lesson really is not this particular result, but rather how we get down to this result, which is to apply a simple derivative to um, the volume as a function of r. Our example of the sphere uh, is an example where we have one, me one parameter that we're after, the volume of the sphere, which is determined by one measured parameter, the radius of the sphere. And I generalize the result for the uncertainty in the volume on this first line of the board. Here we have uh, a parameter x that we're measuring in the laboratory. There's an uncertainty that we've established for that parameter x. And we're calculating some other parameter z that depends on x. And we want to know the uncertainty in z. And we've just established that the uncertainty in z is approximately equal to the derivative of z with respect to x evaluated at x0 multiplied by the uncertainty in x. One more thing that I should add here is that this derivative may be positive or negative, and by convention we talk about uncertainties as always being positive, so I'm going to include an absolute value sign on the derivative of z with respect to x.
Now we'd like to generalize this result to situations where the parameter that we're after depends on <coughs> more than one measured parameter in the laboratory. For example, the composite length is determined by L1 and L2. The area of our rectangle is determined by W and H. To calculate the uncertainty in Z when it depends, let's say, on two uh, measured parameters, X and Y, we're going to basically use this result out, but we're going to have two terms in our, in our expression. And we have to be a little bit more careful with writing our derivatives. And I've written the correct expression here. First of all, let me add the absolute value signs before I forget, and then I'll explain uh, what this notation is saying. If we look at the first term in this expression, the uncertainty in Z has a contribution from the uncertainty in X, and we're multiplying that uncertainty in X by what's called the partial derivative of Z with respect to X, evaluated at the point X0, Y0. What we mean by this is that if we have a function of two variables, a partial derivative with respect to one variable means that we hold the second variable constant. We treat it as a constant, and then we take the derivative with respect to the variable that we're interested in. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. We add to this term a second term, which is taking into account the fact that our second uh, parameter y also has an uncertainty delta y. And this time we're going to take a partial derivative of z with respect to y, again evaluating at the point x0, y0. So there are two contributions to the, to the overall uncertainty in z. And of course if we have three or four variables you can imagine more terms in this expression. Now I think what I'd like to do is illustrate this uh, expression with uh, the example that we were talking about in our first video, which is the area of a rectangle. So let's take a look at that expression one more time. The area of a rectangle, of course, is just its width times its height. And <coughs> translating that equation into the, into the mathematics that we're using here, we're going to consider A to be a function of the variables W and H. And then the uncertainty in A can be written as the sum of two terms involving partial derivatives of A with respect to W and H. So let's go through that and see how quickly we can come up with a result. Uh, just rewriting this expression for A, the uncertainty in A should be the partial derivative of A with respect to the first variable W evaluated at W0, H0 multiplied by the uncertainty in W and there's an absolute value sign here, plus the absolute value of the partial derivative of A with respect to H evaluated at W0, H0, close, let's see, parentheses, close parentheses, multiplied by the uncertainty in H. That looks complicated, but it's going to simplify it really quickly. The uncertainty in A is the partial derivative of A with respect to W is very simple. The function A of W and H is simply equal to the product WH. If I want to take the partial derivative with respect to W, the instruction is to treat H as a constant and take the derivative of this expression with respect to W. The derivative of that expression is simply H. So this derivative is H. But now I'm instructed to evaluate that derivative at the point W0, H0. So this becomes H0. That's our measured value for the height of the rectangle. So this first term is just H0 times delta W. And the second term is just as simple. The partial derivative of A with respect to H means we'll hold W constant and take the derivative with respect to H. That derivative is simply W evaluated at the point W0, H0. That's W0, and we're multiplying by delta H. That doesn't look like the result that we had in the last video, but we can make it look like that result by simply dividing both sides of the equation by our best guessed value for the area, which I'll call A0. A0 is W0 times H0. And I think that's as far as I need to go with this one. The H0s cancel here, the W0s cancel here, and we come up with the expression that we found. Look at that. Whoops. Something doesn't look quite right here. <coughs> 
the W zeros cancel, leaving an H zero in the denominator, we come up with a result that we found numerically in the last video, which is that the fractional uncertainty in the area is the sum of the fractional uncertainties in W and H. Okay, one last thing I'd like you to do. Uh, we, we now have, first of all, the general expression that we need to evaluate uh, the propagation of uncertainties in just about any circumstance, and that expression is right here. It looks a little bit messy, but I hope the example of the uncertainty in the area shows you that the calculation is quite a bit simpler than it might look at first glance. So what I'd like you to do is, is uh, just as a little bit of practice, is go back to the problem that I posed at the very beginning, which is what's the uncertainty in our calculated value of g if we measure the length of a pendulum and the period of its oscillation. <coughs> and let's see if I can remember that g is equal to 4 pi squared L over T squared. And I'd like you to take that expression and see if you can show by the application of this formula that the uncertainty in your derived value of g is going to be equal to delta L over L plus 2 delta T over T. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. I'll point out that <clears throat> there are many circumstances where there are very convenient expressions for, oh, I think I have a new g down here, excuse me, the fractional uncertainty in g is the delta L over L plus 2 delta T over T. There are lots of circumstances where the final expression for uncertainty or fractional uncertainty comes in a form that is insightful and easy to interpret. To get to these forms, we always ultimately come back to the mathematics that we described today. One last comment at this point. I want to mention uh, for when, when we go forward, uh, perhaps in 107 or in other physics classes, this expression for the uncertainty in Z is actually uh, an approximation in the sense that it is telling us sort of a worst case scenario because what we're saying here is that if we have uncertainties in the parameters x and y, those uncertainties will always add together to produce an uncertainty in z. But it's certainly possible if we have, if, if we've made our measurements and perhaps we measure x to be a little higher than it should be and, and y to be a little bit lower than it should be, that in fact these two terms might sometimes partially cancel one another. So this is in fact a slightly approximate expression. There are, there are uh, uh, better ways of describing the addition of uncertainties uh, that we'll get to a little bit later in the physics curriculum.